I was glad when they said to me, 
Let us go to the house of the Lord. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence, and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen, strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians, whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord 
and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us say Canticle 15, the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help, come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. reading from Revelation. When the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, in order to gather them for battle. They are as numerous as the sands of the sea. They marched up over the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints in the beloved city. And fire came down from heaven and consumed them. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I come to you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Over the course of one week, I've experienced a roller coaster of emotions. I've been hopeful. I've been discouraged. I've been tired. I've been energized. I've been angry and I've been jubilant. I felt a whole lot of emotions and wrote and rewrote about as many sermons. And not only did I experience all these feelings throughout the week, there were a few moments when I felt tired, hopeful, energized, angry, jubilant, and discouraged all at once. And I got a hunch that I'm not the only one. But no matter what I was feeling, no matter what place I was in, I kept returning to a quote from one of my favorite theologians. Maybe you've heard of him. His name is St. Johnny Cash, and in one of his many musical epistles, he writes, Go tell that long-tongued liar, go tell that midnight rider, tell the rambler, the gambler, the backbiter. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. I've been carried by this simple yet profound theological truth all week long. And let's be clear, it's not a naive message. It's not just another way of saying, don't worry, everything's going to be all right. No, it's an honest, you might even say realistic assessment. It does not ignore the unsettling reality that long-tongued liars keep on running, sometimes for a long time, even after they've clearly lost the race. It does not ignore the fact that midnight riders have a tendency to wear us out and wear us thin. It does not ignore the power of ramblers and gamblers and backbiters to cause all sorts of harm and evil. But St. Cash's theological proclamation does declare unapologetically that you can only oppose God's project of love for so long before you got to go. You can only wage war against the saints for so long before you lose your throne. You can only sow the seeds of hate and division for so long before God cuts you down. And you know what? This message just might be at the heart of our gospel. At the very least, it runs throughout our sacred scripture. When Moses went down, way down, to Egypt's land. He basically told the old Pharaoh, you can run on for a long time, but sooner or later, God will cut you down. And remember, 
Pharaoh didn't listen to Moses. His heart remained hardened even after the people had spoken. In victory, he kept on declaring despite the fact that God had already called the election. Old Pharaoh kept on running. But Moses believed that sooner or later, God will cut him down. When John the Revelator, exiled on the island of Patmos, shared with the saints his vision of Satan and his angels fallen from heaven. He was basically singing Johnny's proclamation. You can run on for a long time. You can run on for a long time. You can run on for a long time. But sooner or later, God will cut you down. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. And remember, the beast did not agree to a smooth or peaceful transition of power. He kept on speaking blasphemous lies to the very end, but John the Revelator believed that beasts do not get to choose their own destiny, and sooner or later, God will cut them down. When Sister Mary, pregnant with our Savior, visited her cousin Elizabeth, she might not have known exactly how the next few months would play out. But she knew that God was, even then, casting down the mighty from their thrones, scattering the proud in their conceit, and turning the rich away empty. In other words, she too believed that you can run on for a long time, but sooner or later, God will cut you down. Sooner or later, God will cut you down. And remember, when Mary sang her song, Caesar was still on the throne. His troops were still terrorizing her neighborhood. His decrees were still stealing bread from the children's table. Yet she believed, sooner or later, God will cut him down. And when John the Baptist at the River Jordan preached a fiery sermon about burning chaff, when he said with certitude that God's axe was at the root, ready to cut down the trees, barren, strange fruit, he was basically saying, you can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time, but sooner or later, God will cut you down. And remember, as John preached in the wilderness, Herod was still living in his palace. But even so, the Baptists believe that sooner or later, God will cut them down. And like Moses, Mary, and three brothers named John, I believe it too. Now don't get me wrong, I fully realize that all of our beasts were not cast down last week. Far from it. Millions of our brothers and sisters across this nation, many of them claiming the name Christian, endorsed a man who separates mothers and fathers from their children and brags about sexually assaulting women. Which means we've got some work to do and some gospel to preach. Here in this state, our so-called elected leaders tricked our neighbors into passing an amendment that will disorder our communities and discount our children, which means we've got some work to do and some gospel to preach. The long-tongued liar continues to spread falsehoods, undermine our democracy, and deceive the people, which means we've got some work to do and some gospel to preach. So yeah, it's true. The powers and principalities that wage war on the saints have not all been conquered, but as Brother Cornell West said just the other day, our enemies are mighty, but they are not almighty. The God of the Revelator's vision is almighty. The God of Johnny's strumming is almighty. The God of Mother Mary's singing is almighty. The God of the Baptist preaching is almighty. And although the Almighty might not have trampled down all the vintage with his terrible swift sword last week, one thing is for certain. God has chopped down at least one rotten, hollowed out tree with his sharp and ancient axe. And that axe has a name. It's called We the People. 
And we the people chose decency over treachery. We the people chose democracy over tyranny. We the people chose equality over white supremacy. We the people chose bread for the hungry over tax breaks for the wealthy. We the people chose the welfare of our community over the selfish demands of the rich and of the greedy. And ain't no lies, ain't no lawsuits, ain't no litigation, ain't no lawyer, and ain't no legislation going to take away we the people's voice or steal we the people's power because God's sword is swift and it is terrible and that gives me hope for both today and for tomorrow and yes it is true we still got work to do yes we're feeling tired and we're feeling weary yes the battle is not yet won yes there are still serpents to crush and yes it's almost certain that the beast will not go without a fight but the axe has struck the chaff has burned and this message to the long-tongued liars the beast and demons is both true and certain you can run on for a long time you can run on for a long time you can run on for a long time but sooner or later god will cut you down sooner or later god will cut you down amen I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Created us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Good morning, everyone. Prayers of the People, Forum 2, are found in your service bulletin or page 385 of the Book of Common Prayer. I invite your intercessions and thanksgivings during each of the silences. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Dion, for this virtual gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I 
I ask your prayers for all who seek God or deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially for those who we now name. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Nick, Sharon, Denver, and Charlene, Gwen, Frank, David, Becca, Dorothy, Barbara, Martha, Stephen, Bruce, Jeff, and for all others whom we now pray for. I ask your thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, including all those blessings we now name. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of our Son, of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and to the love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.